The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory be to thee, O Lord. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearances say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us unto the living word our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen Amen. Amen. Please be seated Today we are confronted with two interesting readings The Old Testament reading speaks of the widow of uh, Zarephath and and the gospel also speaks to us about another widow a widow in the temple Both these people, being widows, being women, were marginalized in society, they didn't have anything left. And yet we heard how they gave of all that they had. The widow of Zarephath was about to fry her last morsel of meat, the last little that she had to eat, and she was about to go and die. And yet she gave the first place to the prophet of God. And then we have the widow in the temple. We don't know much about her. We don't know where she is from. We only know that she was a widow and that she had nothing else left. But she gave all that she had. My father, and unfortunately my wife's father, both of them have a very annoying habit. Anyone comes up to them and asks for help, even if they know that they have been exploited, they wouldn't say no. They would always help them. And this really ticks me off. Why would they do that? Why would they help someone who they know is exploiting them? Don't they have responsibilities? Don't they have families to take care of? Don't they have bills to pay? And I've always confronted my father with this. I know people who have even given their wedding bands to help someone else who is in need. This annoys me because we are brought up in a culture of giving out of the abundance of what we have. We give of the extra that we have, not from what we actually need. But then these two scripture passages tell something completely different. They challenge us to give all that we have. Now, this passage is not just about giving everything that we have, and don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to reach into your purses and drop in everything that you have during collection. That is not the goal of this message. There are people who live in abject poverty, who choose that life of monasticism. They take on the vow of poverty. We know St. Francis 
as a good example, who advocated for his brothers not to have anything for themselves, but to live according to this world, completely with nothing at all. But when we read these two passages together, I think there is a deeper message that God wants to challenge us on. What was unique about these two women is where they placed their trust. The widow of Zarephath was a Gentile, she wasn't a Jew, but she trusted in the word of the prophet, who said that you will not go hungry. Give me the first meal, and you will not go hungry. She had no reason to trust, but she trusted him. The widow in the temple didn't have anyone else to rely on. She only had the last two coins in her possession. But when she put it into the treasury, she trusted, she demonstrated that she trusted in God completely. And in contrast, we see Jesus speaking to the scribes just before the story about the widow. And he denounces the scribes. Why does he do this? Because of their outward piety. They love to dress up in long robes and say long prayers. They love the most prominent, prominent seats in public. Their piety was something that was just outwardly shown. And in contrast, we have this widow who was unseen, we don't know anything about her, who silently demonstrates that she trusts in God. We are challenged today to learn to completely place our trust on God. Let's think back and try to understand where we place our trust. Do we trust our resources? Do we trust our education? Do we trust our jobs? Do we trust our property? Do we trust our families more than we trust God? And here is a challenge to us, to place our trust in God and not on anything else. When we trust God, when we place our trust completely on God, the promise is given that he will take care of the widows and the orphans. And because of that, just like the psalmist, we can also praise and give and sing praises to God. And so, it's not about giving all what we have. It is about placing our trust in God. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Let's think back on our life. Are we like the scribes or are we like those widows? Do we show our piety through outward signs? Or do we have a simple complete trust that God will take care of us. Just like these two women, these two widows, let us place our trust completely on God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.